Oh, is a work of prediction building. Tam na customer te kat help is all. Hello, na mi bage. Ti min marem. Oh, marem mo. Tu tu work of Angel thoi. Hmm, Angel. Bang ti min support. Ah, Portugal. Portugal. Asiam zio mo hilo Cristiano Ronaldo handsome sa injana support. Cristiano Ronaldo zia. Abol pa siam zio mo hilo le mi loy injana support. Kan mo siam ni sa, wajah fit kasa. Okay. Amak tu ngai sang himim. Portugal tiada zodi nagi tayo tu tung. Hmm. Ronaldo dia kalah zodi kagi. Ronaldo in gol tu pun tak top scorer, best player in all di nagi tak tahu itu tung. Hmm. Kamuang tu pak kagi tak. Okay. Oh kat tali ya cile. Portugal tiada bana. Portugal tiada gua final kai tiada dia. Kau ijin tung final kai tiada nagi tayo nagi tandan. Yang di sesi ini tinang itu allah ya mua. Kaming tak mua. Argentina kaging tak. Argentina Messi versus Portugal, Messi versus Ronaldo mua. Tidak mua. Kaging tua kaging tin. Hei dek, Ronaldo tu hunzoh hi mua. Nah. Ronaldo fan ni ya congratulations Ronaldo hat trick tu pan ngalah match ni cuma dia orang Malaysia tu aja ni top score nang chance sawi mua. Marem tu ni nahan man katanang PSG ni kau tu patut panggil atau ni marem. Snooker cuma kalau ni hi. Tu tu work up prediction balding, how pi jual dia wah. Tapi nak aku mau boy lah itu, hilang zaman kan besok boy jual dia wah. Hello, nak minum bang? Alex. Alex. Oh, Alex nang hiak mau lagi zaman ni tengah. Hmm, ya om zil. Okay, snooker nasi am gotai. Kapten itu kita. Work up hun lah itu ya bang. Kami nang depan pi favorite country sini, sambil itu nama. Belgium pun. Belgium, and then Hazard, Kevin De Bruyne. Lineup Zosia squad hoi mama ya. Tutung ni World Cup Belgium then three zero in Stan Galwa. Tutung ni World Cup la Zodi neng Gintai. Hmm, Gintah. Gintah mo. Belgium tiap mana koye team dang final buat hadian Gintah. France. France mo. Tutung individual player koye neng star player itu. Hazard tu buat. Hazard, then Hazard. Real Madrid lut mai tei mo. Tiapa hoye neng prediction neng Gintah ya. Tu ini dalam la kimbol boy nan lezong kat bayi pas boy jual dia ya striker pai. Hello, nang min bagai? Eh, tang. Eh, tang. Ya kimbol gigi yang mana tengah? Ah, kimbol gigi yes. Oh, kimbol gigi yes semua. Tu tunggu aku bawa favourite team nanti. Argentina. Argentina, kau yang Argentina fans kau ni. Argentina tu ini first match Iceland dia one 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 ini dropping awal nanti disappoint tau eh. Ah, le mabana ungat tau jelu kalau main. Tu tu Argentina tu nampak pi tu kan tali koi ladin nagi tay Argentina tu apa na? Argentina ilo le Brazil in ladin kaji. Brazil mo koi top scorer nagi tay Neymar Messi Cristiano Ronaldo ahilo le bidang kat top scorer din so Ronaldo kaji. Ronaldo gol tu mukum tay he's in mid ni qualify eh an extra na zon gol ni mukum tay ngal dia mo. Kepa way lah hunman katanang PSG. This is the coolest place to hang out. This is Uber and Chick. If you are young and you are looking for a place to hang out, this is there is no better place. Hi, Sana. Hey, hey, brother. How are you doing? What a cool place to meet you here, man. Yeah, man. I'm good to see you here. What's the name of this place? Why are you here? It's awesome. It's a really nice place, you know. You should be coming here often because I do come here often. Mm. And I play games and I hang out with friends. It's a really nice place. Most happening place in Chutanpur. You should come here often. And, you know, instead of going somewhere else, you know, not having inappropriate places, this is the right place to be in. You can have fun, spend some time with friends, you know, play some games, take some bets, you know, and watch the games as well. The World Cup is going on. What else you need? Most happening place, you know? This is the coolest place I've yeah, been. Right. Music in the background, you can watch, you have all sorts of TV and so many youngsters and I just love the vibes here. Right, Ladies right. and gentlemen, today is sixth day of World Cup. Match day six, we are back here with Tinglen, South Indian player. So we'll be analyzing what's the latest happening in World Cup. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the next episode of On Bill Special World Cup Preview. This is my title, your host. We are ready for match day six. Today, Joining here with me on the studio at Aussies is the man who doesn't need introduction. Ladies and gentlemen, here I'm presenting you Ching Len Sana, the first person who represents Indian team from this district, Lanka. If there is anyone, one person whom we like to talk about football, he should be the one. Hi, Sana. Hello, nice to see you again. It's a cool place to hang out here at Aussies, yeah. right? Right. It's match day six, there's lots of excellent happening. But before we get into all those big talking points, 
the first simple question I want to ask you, can you quickly tell us how does your career start in football? Yeah, first of all, uh, I start off about my playing journey, playing career so far. I would feel nice to say about this place, it's really amazing. You guys should come visiting here. You know, I come with my friend very often and it's a good place to hang out, you know, in Chuchanpu. Uh, things like this really doesn't happen, but, you know, I'm really happy to see my district, you know, doing well. This type of kind of place is coming up. I'm really happy and it's a good place to hang out. So you guys should visit here really often. It's a really good place. And uh, to your question, my brother, uh, the way I started playing is uh, I joined the Tata Football Academy and I got selected there and it's not an easy thing to get selected for the Tata Football Academy. So, you know, after getting selected there, uh, it's hard work. You have to really work hard. You have to be focused. After that, you sign a pro contract. So I signed for FC Go. Uh, sorry, I signed for first uh, for Silong Lazong. And under Thangboy Singto, I really did well and he was my mentor in setting up my career. So I would like to give a lot of credit to him as well. So in Lazong, I learned a lot of things as a professional player, how to be disciplined, how to maintain yourself. And uh, from there on, I went to play for Delhi Dynamos. And uh, that's how I get called up to the Indian senior team as well. I thank Stephen Constantine for giving me the opportunity there. And uh, so after that, I joined FC Goa now. And I'm currently playing there and I have a contract with them. So next season, I'll be playing for them. And you guys should support FC Goa. Well, well, Mr. Sana, you've been working under different cultures, especially with the coming of ISL in Indian football scene. You must be traveling across abroad pre-season. Where is the best place that you have been? Uh, I've been to Sweden. I've been to Scotland with uh, Delhi Dynamos last season. It was a great experience for me. It was uh, my first year, and I was so excited as a young boy, 19 year old. You know, uh, it was a great exposure, great learning experience under Maluda. You know, Gianluca Ambrota, Simone Baroni. They all World Cup players and good achievers in world football. So I get to learn a lot from them. And what I, what can I say about the season that I had with Delhi Dynamos? It was really an amazing season. A lot of learning experience. Sweden was a nice place, Scotland was a nice place, I went to England as well and last season with FC Goa we went to Spain, learned a lot there, uh, beautiful football, new technique, how to keep the ball well and so and so, so nice places to be in. Well, let's not talk about how beautiful the cities are, but what would be the one thing that you take back? What are the surprising that you see the football culture in Europe? What is the difference there in India and here? As I said, uh, the infrastructure, especially the you know, it's really well run and well maintained. They have a lot of pitches. Uh, they eat well and it's really well organized. Um, football is way ahead, you know, in terms of infrastructure. So that's something that we need to work on as a nation to improve. And of course, uh, with the ISR and everything, a lot of clubs are doing well. In the world map, we are really, you know, there at the top, you know. So we are going well, but slow and steadily we are improving as a nation. So everything is going well, and as I said, the infrastructure is the real difference, and that makes a lot of difference. Well, as I've said, you have been traveling different parts of the world, and let's talk about coaches. Yes, you have mentioned you are trained. Your first chance was in TFA, then after that you were under the guidance of Tang Boy Shinto. Yeah. You must have lots of exposure to working under different coaches. What, who would be that single coach whom you feel is transforming your life, your career, and take you to the place where you are today? Uh, yeah, Vijay Kumar in TFA, he is no more now. He was a coach that uh, selected me for Tata Football Academy. Um, after that, I would give a lot of credit to Thangboy Singto for stepping up and for an 18-year-old to be signed by the club and given the opportunity to play in the I-League at a top level, you know, play against the three, play against the top players of the of Indian and as well as foreign players. So it was a great honor and you know, a lot of learning experience in La Zong days. That made me the player I was, I am, uh, you know, of the opportunity that I got under him the trust, the faith and everything he put on me and I'm glad I stood up to it. So I give him a lot of credit and also when I joined Delhi Dynamos under Zambrota, I learned a lot and I was, I'm was a center back so he made me play right back and I did that well in that position as well. So there is versatility coming in as well. So it has been a good experience under a lot of coaches and with uh, Sergio Lobero and Dave Pereira in FC Goa, I've learned how to keep the ball well and you know I've improved as a player and I'm only looking forward to improve immensely as a player. Well. We have been talking top, top flight football, but this off-season you are forming up your team and playing some of the local tournaments. 
So do you think this Lamka has got a lot of talent? The only thing is we need exposure or what should be the next step we are taking so that we can produce more people, youngsters like you to, be, to play top level from our district? Uh, there's no doubt about talent in uh, our locality, to be honest. There's no doubt at all. There are a lot of talented players, but there comes a discipline you know, in football which you need to follow very strictly. No matter how talented you are, if you're not hardworking, if you're not disciplined, if you don't maintain yourself well, then it's not going to take you far in life. Uh, so, you know, football is a thing that, you know, you need to be disciplined, you need to have talent, of course, but with talent, without hard work, it's, it's you know, it's like waste, I would say. So you have to be hardworking, you have to be talented as well. And, you know, when I say this uh, about the local talent, there are a lot of talents, uh, but that needs to be nature, that needs to be moved in the right direction. You need to be really, you have, need to have a vision as well. Uh, you know, by playing some private tournament, local tournament here, you think you're a star, then that's a problem. You know, you have to be there playing at the top, and still you can't think you're a star. You have to always keep improving. Football is something that you're never perfect, you're never accomplished. It's a learning day, even for Cristiano and Messi. Every day they're learning, every day there's failure, there's mistakes, but they learn and they do the best. That's why they're in the world's best players. So, you know, we should have good mentality as well as a player. So this is what I would like to say to the youngsters of uh, Turtanpur, that you know, you guys have talents, but you need to be disciplined and you need to be really hardworking. Stay dedicated, stay humble, and I wish them all the best. Well, this would be the last question about your personal life before we review about the World Cup. Well, the coming of ISL, do you think that is transforming the life of so many footballers, especially in terms of money, publicity, and just imagine the publicity and the exposure that you are getting. So, what is your take on this issue? Of course, there's no doubt about it. You know, with the ISL coming in, there's a lot of uh, media involvement as well. Uh, people know you more as well, which is good, you know, for a sports person to be known and to be appreciated across the country. And uh, in terms of uh, professionalism, I would say, you know, in terms of training facility, in terms of hotels that we stay in, in terms of the coaches that's coming in, the players that's coming in, there's a lot of massive improvement, uh, massive quality, which is really important. So those are the things uh, that has been improved with the ISL coming in, and it's glad that it's happening. And you know, with only the fourth season until now, and has done a lot in Indian uh, football. So it's a really good, positive move forward. No wonder there's a lot of money, and you are driving one of the top cars, and you are living life. The dream, that is dream of so many young people. Right. We're really happy and we're looking for what you see lots of your uh, matches coming in next season. So we wish you all the best from Thank you very much. our side. So let's get into the World Cup talking points. It's been six days, lots of surprise, so many things to talk about. We want to start first with Portugal versus Spain. Do you think this match is living up to the bill? Cristiano Ronaldo rising up to the occasion when the team really needs him. Yeah, he's a legend. He has been doing this throughout the last 10 years, I would say. You know, he's someone that has always lifted up for Portugal as well as the club that he plays for. So he's a world best player, no doubt. And, you know, all I can say about him is that uh, he just keeps us in prison more and more. Uh, the games that he plays, we can always expect a lot from him and he never, uh, you know, he never disappoints us, to be honest. So he's that kind of a player that you know we enjoy watching, and it makes so much more interesting in football. Looking at the history of World Cup players, most of the top scorers are not scoring more than five goals. Already three goals in the first match. He is gonna face Iran and Morocco. Do you think there is a big chance for him to become a top scorer? Definitely, definitely. You know, if he can score three goals against uh, Spain, why not against other teams? But that's football. You know, you can't say like uh, he will score a hat trick again against uh, Iran or something more. That's not what it is, but yeah, on a given day he can do his best any given day. While the whole world is raving about Cristiano Ronaldo, there is another diminutive greatest player of all time, Lionel Messi, missing out a crucial penalty. Do you think Messi is under immense pressure because out of 10 penalties he's taken, he missed out 6? Yeah. Uh, he has been under uh, this pressure whenever he is uh, playing for Argentina, you know. That's the kind of uh, weight that he has in the team, that kind of expectation that the entire country puts on him. Not only the country, but also all his fans across the world put a lot of faith in him. So things happen, you know. Neymar, as Neymar said, he's the best player in the world. And that's because uh, he thinks Lionel Messi and Cristiano Ronaldo are from a different planet, which can be true actually, you know. So uh, two great players, two world top players uh, making mistakes whom Neymar thinks are outside of this uh, world, they're from a different planet. If they can make mistakes, then why not you know, uh, 
us human beings, normal people. So yeah, uh, yeah, making mistake is fine, but he's still one of the best players, and we should enjoy his football as well as Cristiano's football, and we should compare him, compare them less, and enjoy their football more. I want to ask you this simple question. If you're the coach of Argentina, would you say, Messi, it's time for you to hang up, taking penalty? Or would you rather trust there are so many talents in your lineup? Aguero is a fantastic penalty taker. Or would you wait for Messi to confess, let me not take penalty anymore? What should be your, I mean, what should be your stand in case you are the coach of Argentina? If I was, I should be dreaming. <laughs> yeah, but uh, yeah. On a given day, if I'm the coach and if I have to make this call, I would still give him an opportunity because he always proves and he is someone that we can always look up to and that's a player that we depend on. So, you know, I'll give him this uh, chance, I'll put the fate on him so that he can deliver it for us. Mistake happens, he missed, but you know, he'll score for sure. That's the belief and yeah, definitely giving him chance should be the option. Many of the both fans just imagine that because Lionel Messi and Argentina are playing, they are going to have an easy walk in the park against Iceland. But history proved that Iceland, they were 1-1 draw against Portugal. And they beat, they knocked out England out of the quarterfinal. They lost out in the quarterfinal Euro last edition. But this country, 3,000, 330,000 population is showing some great medal as we have seen the last day. So it's still a bad performance. What, what's your take on Argentina's 1-1 draw against Iceland? See, Iceland is a team that works together. You know, they attack together, they defend together. They are a very strong unit as a team. There's no such great individuals as other teams such as Portugal or say like uh, Argentina or Spain, you know, which has a lot of individual top players in the world that we know. Uh, most of the Iceland players we don't know, you know. So there is uh, things in the social media as well that, you know, five of them are doctors, one is a director, so and so, you know. So, having said that, uh, football is a teamwork, it's a team game. So, you know, uh, that's what it is. They did well as a team, and Argentina find it hard to break that down. But we should also keep in perspective, looking at the bigger picture, Nigeria and Croatia are coming up in the minus. So, yeah. do you think that looking at the group, that's the easiest? It seems like Iceland are the easiest to take on, but do you think? there is a big chance that Argentina will not make through to the next, in the knockout stage. Uh, you never know, but Argentina is a team that has a lot of character like Aguero, Higuain, uh, Lionel Messi. They're all top players. They can be players that we can depend on. So they can step up any day and they can win the game and they can get the points and they can still qualify, you know? It, it was a draw and it's not a loss, you know, it's not a bad result, I would say, but they would expect three points out of that game, of course, against Iceland, but Iceland proved to be a really good team. So, you know, as it goes forward, you can't count Argentina out or you can't count any teams out. The rest is still on and it's only the first round of the, of the World Cup until now. Well, there's so much talk about Messi and Argentina drawing against Iceland. There is another shocking result. The world champion Germany losing out to Mexico. What she have taken on that? You know, the way Mexico attacked, you know, they were really, really good on the counter-attack especially. And uh, Hummels and uh, Boateng, one of the best defenders in the world. Uh, and one of my role models of whom I learned from watching their videos. So, he said in an interview that, you know, they were exposed in all, most of the occasions because the fullbacks were really attacking and the stopper back were really exposed, you know. But they dealt well and they considered only one goal, not a bad uh, defending, I would say, because they were uh, really, really exposed in many occasions of the game. So they were actually fortunate enough to be just one nil down because uh, Chicharito got few chances and other players got few chances to score. Mm -hmm. But uh, they did not uh, took their advantage, uh, Mexico, so they won one nil. So winning is winning and beating Germany, the defending champion, it's a great result. But there is a lot of reaction among the medias of Germany. They say there is something to worry about this. Looking at the trend of World Cup, France lost the opening after coming back as defending champion. Then Spain, they were knocked out. Italy were done the same. Do you think some of these trends are going to happen? Germany is in danger of being knocked out or do you think they are going to come back stronger and going to perform from now on? Uh, I don't believe much in all the superstitious thing, but yeah, it <laughs> might be true. I'm not sure. But uh, looking at the team, looking at the tactics, to be honest, uh, I think uh, Germany still have a very good chance. They have a lot of players that can be depended on. They have one of the best and the coach is always under the spotlight of when you choose the team, when you choose the player, you know. Uh, because Germany have full uh, potential players who can be picked in the World Cup and some are left over, left, you know, left back home. So they have this uh, 
what to say, rich of uh, choice, you know. So he has picked the best players in the world, and we honestly we know most of them. They're all world superstars, like so they can step up any day and they can win. So we can never count them off. Do you think the pressure is on Joachim Lowe, the coach of Germany? Because looking at his team selection, Lero Sané, he is the most promising player. He has been having a great season in English Premier League winning the title. Do you think he has done justice to leaving out Lero Sané, the man who scored seven goals, 14 assists? Yeah, one I of agree. The best. I agree. He's one of the best. He's one of the young prospects of uh, football in the world. So, But uh, it's coach decision, you know, after all, and we have to respect that. And his team, it's his technique, uh, his... Uh, philosophy you know that we need to respect and we don't know that thing what is going on in his mind so maybe he picked someone else that is uh, better in his uh, technical point so maybe but uh, yeah of course no doubt uh, Sané is one of the best player and as I said Germany has that this strength of choice you know a lot of players to choose from so this is something you know all the coach wants and also doesn't want because he has to make the decision that's really hard so that's what Germany it's, simple, it's a luxury yeah. no coach can afford it yeah. they have embarrassingly talented players yeah. lining up and you know whoever you are picking there will be always criticism right. but from my perspective I have no I can't forgive Joachim Law not taking Lero Sané to the biggest or not why can't he take it? and especially with this kind of result I think the pressure is on him yeah. we have been talking about Germany we have been talking about Argentina what about Brazil when we are thinking they are going to beat Sweet Germany it's 1-1 one, one draw do you think that is a big disappointment the five time uh, world champion yeah Brazil you know uh, the team that I'm supporting since my childhood, since 2002, I was a small kid. I was just eight years old back then. I'm supporting them, you know, from a very long time. So yeah, disappointing uh, against Switzerland, honestly. But uh, as you can see in the match, Neymar is still not 100%. But uh, you know, as the coach said about him, is that uh, he still needs a one game or two that to get to his best, you know, to work that injury sting off. So. It's a matter of time, they'll do well, of course, and they created a lot of chances, entertaining football, and with the kind of bench strength that they have with Fernandino in the bench, and, you know, Dani Alves, and there are many such players in, in the bench, like Firmino, you know, top player for Liverpool. So, it's really a, a big, big team, like as Germany is, or as Spain is, you know. Brazil is the favourites, of course, in this tournament, but uh, having them being drawn, it's really surprising, and you never know, this tournament is really surprising, and every match is really crucial, and I'm enjoying the World Cup, watching all the matches, as much as I can. So are you here telling us that we'll be seeing more of surprises coming up in the coffin? Yeah, definitely, of course, because all the teams are really very well organized, tactically very sound. So, you know, it's also the management, not only the not only having superstars, good players, top players, best players in the world. It's also about how the coach manages the team and how he makes those players do the job, what, what is needed to be done and to avoid losing the match or something like that. So, it's, as, as I said, it's a teamwork and if you know that Iceland did very well against uh, Argentina, that's totally a teamwork. They attack together, defend together. It made it really hard for players like Aguero, Higuain, uh, Lionel Messi, the world best player, you know. So, these things, are, it happens in football and this is what it is. Teamwork wins games lose games it's teamwork talking about Brazil we can't talk Brazil without their talismanic, talismanic man Neymar yeah there is a lot of criticism coming with his first performance that is one the stats doesn't lie out of 17 faults committed 12 are against Neymar yeah. what does that tell me as a football pundit or as a footballer ah. that means Neymar is holding the ball too much yeah he and is some of the some of the pundits are telling telling that he is not playing for PSG he cannot be so boating around waiting for the opponents to give a lot of chance to he should be playing as a team and give one two pass and try to play more as a team do you think he's playing too much of individual game uh, he's taking the responsibility of course people a lot of uh, the players as well as the coach and the nation depends on him he's a superstar you know so yeah with responsibility comes a lot of uh, criticism as well so you know you have to deliver all the time and people expect players like Lionel Messi, Cristiano Ronaldo and Neymar Jr. to always deliver, always perform at the top level. Sometimes, you know, they have bad games. As I said, uh, Neymar still needs one or two games to get off that uh, game time that he's supposed to get because he's just back from an injury and he hasn't played competitive games in the last two, three months with that ankle injury. So, you know, when he's at his best, he'll definitely deliver and one of the best players in the world. And I'm a Brazil supporter, so I believe in him as well. I believe in the team, so we can only look forward to and wish them all the very best. Well, tonight is going to be match day six. 
let's focus for the match tonight. The first match is between Portugal versus Morocco. Yeah. So Cristiano Ronaldo scoring three goals. Do you think he's high on confidence to go on for hunting for more goals? Or do you think this Moroccan side who doesn't let in any goal in the qualifying will be playing stubbornly, very resistant, absorbing all the pressure and refuse to play, parking the bus? So what kind of mix are we expecting here? Uh, you, of course, you expect a very good game because both teams want to win because they drew the last match. Uh, Portugal needs to win. You know, Spain also will be looking to win. But against Morocco, if you say that uh, they are a very strong defensive side, of course, we do respect to all the players of the Moroccan defenders. You know, Ronaldo scored against PK, against Ramos. Okay, so they're the world best players, world best defenders, you, you say. So if you can score hat trick against them, why not against Morocco? You know, to be honest, some of the players we don't even know. You know, so if you can score against Ramos and uh, Ramos Digia, you know, who did so well for Manchester United, had a bad game that day, of course, understand, understandable, but he still scored a hat trick. So we can expect Ronaldo to score a few more goals in the game. So it's not only about winning, they need to win convincingly so that they'll be at the top of the table and they can avoid some big teams coming up in the next round. Right. And let's talk about the next match that is coming up, Uruguay versus Saudi Arabia. Saudi Arabia has been thrust 5-0 by Russia, so are we expecting more goals coming from Uruguay? If Russia can score 5, do you think Uruguay, Cavani and all the big names like Luis Suarez, they are going to score more goals or it's going no, to be very different? I would not like to think that way because, uh, you know, on a given day, Russia took their chances and they converted whatever chances they had. And, you know, Uruguay, uh, yeah, of course, they have players like Suarez, Cavani, who can really score goals and who are top scorers in their respective clubs. But uh, on a given day, uh, you know, Saudi Arabia may do well against them because he may want to, uh, they may want to, of course, they'll give a fight and they're in the World Cup for a reason. They wouldn't go back without fighting, so they may give their best and who knows, they may even win the game. But yeah, my prediction will be Uruguay, of course, winning the game, but I would not uh, like to see a 5-0 score again, maybe just 1-0, 2-0, that's more respectable. The last match of the day is going to be a run versus Spain. So do you think Spain will be all going up trying to score a lot of goals or what kind of match are, match are we going to expect here? The first thing they will look for is the three points, the most important thing. Mm -hmm. Then they can think of scoring more goals and they have players that can that can deliver and they can do the job for them. But on a given day, they have to deliver and they have to give their best and it should be the day to be able to win the game first and get the important three points. After that, they can think of winning 3-0, 4-0, 5-0 whatsoever. So first thing is important for them is to win so as for Portugal. We've been talking a lot about Brazil, Germany and some of these big powerhouses to SFL right. Already one round is over and the next round is going to get in. So which of two teams do you think are dark horse? Like Belgium, England, there's not much hype about them. But Belgium is saving their golden generation. Right. Do you think they have a chance? Of course they do. Belgium also possesses a lot of superstars like Eden Hazard, Lukaku, many to be named as. But uh, yeah, as I said, this World Cup is really surprising and has taken us by storm. With Russia winning 5-0, big scoreline, performing well, and with Iceland drawing with Argentina, you know. So every team is doing well and it's really exciting and you can't really bet who is going to win. You're only betting by looking at the players, their lineup and so and so. But the team that plays as a team, the team that performs, the team that sticks together, is going to win the cup for sure. Ladies and gentlemen, this is Matt Stay's World Cup preview. This is Mount Titul, your host, and today we have now panelists, Indian national player and FC Goa player, Ching Len Sana, the rising star, the biggest star of Lamka. We'll be back with another episode. If you like this show, you can share, subscribe, or watch on YouTube. For those who are not watching on Hornbill, this is Mount signing out for today. Thank you for watching this. Thank you. Thank you.